The feedback needs to be clear. Your report and errors. I am not happy. If this continues like this, it will be very difficult for me to confirm your employment. We do lots of things and we don't really know what we did. What's on your mind? If you are looking for problems, come on, you are going to get thousands of problems. I find what I am looking for. And what is? When we have more options, we can actually make better decisions. There is a greater than 50% failure rate in the decisions we take. Talk less, listen more. However we are giving feedback, the feedback needs to be clear. Yes, if you tell someone and in your mind you think you are giving negative feedback, but in the mind of that person they think it's positive, we have totally lost the plot. We are giving negative feedback, but the person is thinking, boss said I'm good. Yeah, so that this was actually told to me by one of the HR directors of an organization where they said, you know, Sanjay, we had an issue with the management training. Yeah, let's say for example, uh, the management training was me and I was reporting to Charita and Charita go, Charita's HR director is Upendra. So Charita goes and tells Upendra, you know, Upendra Sanjeev Haryan, ne, right? Sanjeev is not doing his work. So Upendra says, now so Charita may try to develop him. Yeah, we have recruited as management trainer, try to develop him, give him the feedback. So what's the feedback Charita gives Sanjeev? Sanjeev, you have to improve a little, huh? not enough, you improve a little. Now I'm thinking, how oh, good, I have to improve a little, no? So in my mind now I am improving a little. So Charita never told me more than Sanjeev you need to improve a little. But he goes to Upendra, Upendra Sanjeev is useless. What a wrong choice of recruitment. We shouldn't keep him here. Please get rid of him. And lots of times we do this, right? Where we go and put it to HR and get them to do our dirty work. <laughs> yeah. So HR, let's get HR to, you know, uh, do this for us. So one fine day, now Charita tells Upendra, can't have to get rid of him. Upendra sent me a letter saying, Sanjeev, right, we are discontinuing you because you're still on probation. We don't need to do anything. Please don't turn up for work for tomorrow. I go to Upendra. Why? What happened? No, no, your boss has said you're not good. He never told me. But Upendra, no, no, Charita has been complaining to me all along. No, nothing in writing. He never told me. I said, boss, why didn't you tell me? All you told me is you have to improve a little. I improved a little, no. Do you understand the problem here, right? So, as a leader, you have to be straight with people. You have to give clear feedback. It's not difficult to understand. If someone is not good, you are not good. If someone, so not good is a very abstract thing, but you have to tell them clearly what they are not doing. Your report has errors. I am not happy. If this continues like this, it will be very difficult for me to confirm your employment. It will be clear. All right, so we discussed the SBI model. By the way, that's one way of how your mind map should be developing now. So anyway, that's my mind map. It doesn't have to be like yours, but this covers a lot of the stuff. Let's get on to coaching conversations. So lots of you asked me, so okay, Sanjeev, SPI all good. We told them the situation. We told them what behavior we didn't like. We told them the impact it had on us. How do we get them to improve? <laughs> By the way, SBI is not only for the low performers. It's also for the good performers. If I want to say, tell someone, look, you did great. Remember, we discussed pouncing on a good thing. You know, um, Prakash, I saw you doing that. Remember yesterday, there was a customer who was very upset, very angry situation. I noticed you. You were not even involved in that incident, but you came over. You took over the incident, you pacified the customer, you were smiling at the guy, you allowed him to keep screaming till he calmed down, you didn't say anything, you didn't interrupt him, right? And the impact finally was, this guy actually turned around, he came and thanked me also, thanked you also. Prakash, that was absolutely fantastic. It made my day. I was so impressed. I am so happy. SBI not only for bad things, SBI for good things also. <laughs> So now we are trying to reinforce that in Prakash. So Prakash, what made you come and get involved? What did you actually tell this customer? What did you do to calm the customer down? What are you doing here? We are reinforcing the good things he did so that he can continue it. So it gets reinforced. It gets internalized. He is clear. What did he do? It's a learning moment because maybe the next time he doesn't do it unless I have this intervention with him now. See, we do lots of things and we don't really know what we did. <laughs> yes, but if somebody at that instant or very soon after that asks you, so what happened? What was going on in your mind? Why did you do this? What made you do this? Now, what I did becomes a learning for me, right? It, it comes to the surface, which means I'm now clear. Ah, this is what I said. This is what Sanjeev is happy about. This is what I should repeat. So opening the coaching conversation, a great question to start with is, What's on your mind? What's on your mind? 
By the way, this is also the FB question, Facebook question. You go to your status, what does Facebook ask you? What's on your mind? Have you seen? Have you seen that? Have you noticed that? What's on your mind? Now, when you ask someone, what's on your mind, Sanjeev? What's on your mind? Right? See, we have something called RAS, the reticular activation system. So let me explain it to an, through an example. About eight years ago, I decided that I am going to buy a Honda Vessel. All right. I just made the decision in my mind. I want this vehicle. I like this vehicle. I'm going to get this vehicle. I didn't have all the money that was needed, but I just decided I'm going to get it somehow. Rest. No sooner I decided, what did you think I saw? I see more vessels on the road now. How many of you have experienced something like that? Yes, I. I see more vessels on the road. Now what happened? Did it suddenly happen that there are no more vessels on the road? Yes, magically more vessels or what? What happened? I am noticing it more because goal directed behavior of my mind, right? I set a goal. I want this. I'm getting it. And my mind, the rest, reticular activation system shows you more of what you're looking for. Now, this is very, 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 very important. Your rash shows you, rash can not rash, huh? rash. Your rash, reticular activation system, gives you more of what you're looking for. Api hoena de, api ta vedi pura de na. Api prasna hoena na, vedi pura prasna de na. Visadum hoena na, vedi pura visadum de na. Right? Api hoena de tamai, rash again then. So rash gives you more of what you're looking for. If you're looking for solutions, you'll find more solutions. If you're looking for problems, come on, you're going to get thousands of problems. Don't blame anyone because that's what you're looking for. So again, if you're looking to find fault, you will find so many instances where you can find fault and reprimand people, right? If you're looking to appreciate, you will find instances to appreciate. Okay, RAS. So, selective attention. We find what we are looking for. That's what the RAS helps us to do. Do you all understand that the RAS is doing a good thing here? Right? It's giving you what you want in order to achieve your goals. So if your goal is, I want problems, Rice says, I'll give you problems. So what's the learning? Be very careful what you are looking for. Where are you putting your attention? That's what looking for means. Where are you putting your attention? What are you focused on? It will give you whatever you're focused on. Right? I'm focused on eating more. We give you more food. Yeah. Give you whatever you're focused on. Right? And then confirmation bias is, it gives us more evidence to confirm that what I thought was correct. So if I think that, for example, if I think Sugishi is, you know, not a good worker, my RAS is going to show me more ways, more things that she's doing which are wrong, right? To confirm my belief that she's not a good worker. I find what I am looking for. I find what I am looking for. You're looking for solutions, you find solutions. You're looking for problems, you find problems. Looking for opportunities, you find opportunities. You will find what you are looking for. So this question, the Kickstarter question, it's called, what's on your mind? Because sometimes we don't even know what's on our mind, but what's on our mind is direct in our behavior. As soon as you ask the question, what's on your mind? The person focuses now and think, what is the answer I'm going to give boss? Ah, this is what I'm thinking of. Boss, I'm very worried. Okay. What makes you worried? What's on your mind that is making you worried? No boss, the project we are doing. What about this project is making you worried? So what are you doing now? You're using her words or his words back to that person. What's on your mind? So it's called the Kickstarter question. Good question to get things rolling. Especially because of RAS, right? <laughs> Remember RAS. Very important part of your brain. Located right inside. It's a bunch of nuclei which helps us focus. Very important. Well, these are two things, right? Selective attention is we, we are now focused on what we are looking for. Confirmation bias is you are finding more things in what you are looking at to confirm the belief that you had. For example, if our belief is Sri Lanka is finished, it's a useless country, you'll see more things out there to confirm that belief, right? If you're like me and you're thinking, no, we are Sri Lanka, we can turn this around. The people are great. Then my confirmation bias is I will see more and more examples to confirm that belief that no, we can do this. If all of us can do something together, one mind, one mindset, whichever organization we work at, uh, we can do some wonders. Sri Lankans are wonderful people. What do you say? Yes. The second question is called the oh question. Oh. They say it's like the magic question in coaching. Are you ready for the magic question? The oh question. A-W-E. Oh. Any ideas what A-W-E stands for? But A-W-E, the letters, if they stand for three words, what could they be? A-W-E stands for and what else? And what else? In singular? Tava? Itipasse? Now what's on your mind? How, how do you translate and what's on your mind in singular? Tell me some mind. Mono da itan. Tamukad. And what else is? Itipasse? Tamukad. Tamukad kyan din. Tamukad itan. Right? And what else? And what else? Alright. 
So, because sometimes people will tell you the first thing on their mind, which is not the real problem. So, we dig a little bit more. So, she said, I am very worried about this project. Okay. And what else? No, it's this. The project deadline. What else? Until she finally says, no, I think that's it. Okay. Now, you can go to the next one. So, what makes you worried about this? <laughs> so, the first answer is not the only answer and really the best answer. Okay. First answer is not the only answer, really the best answer. So, when we have more options, we can actually make better decisions. So you say, what should we do now? Boss, it's either this or this. It's either A or B. So then you ask, is there any other option? If they say, no boss, I really looked at it, it's either A or B. But if you ask, is there any other option, anything else we can do? Ah yes, we make A, we have to do C or D also. So what research says is, that when the choice before decision is just, should we do this or not? Yes or no? Just the yes or no decision. Are we doing this or not? For 71% of decisions are just the choice between yes or no. Should we do this or not? Right? 71% of the decisions we make are just a choice between Mega Karan and Epad. What they have found is when it's only a choice between yes or no, there's a greater than 50% failure rate. There's a greater than 50% failure rate in the decisions we take. It is sinking in greater than 50% is a lot, right? How do we bring this down? By adding one more choice. So when you ask, and what else? And they say now, yes, we could do A or not do A, or we could do B or C. By adding a few more choices, the failure rate comes down from greater than 50 to 30. Which means on the other side, seven, the success rate goes up to 70, which is good, right? So what they're trying to show here is why this and what else question is important, right? So and what else is asking and what else is a good idea? It's a great idea. Okay. Also, by asking the and what else, it gets us to shut up a little bit longer. What the, what, the, what research says is, it's very difficult for us to keep our mouth shut. Right? So as leaders, talk less, listen more. As salesmen also, talk less, listen more. Because the customer tells you the problem. Sometimes you're talking so much, we don't even hear the customer saying, I want to buy. You miss that also. I'm still trying to sell. I'm like, I told you I want to buy. Now I don't want to buy. I'm going to buy. Right? We lost the sale. Right? Talk less, listen more. Very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. Would you agree? Very difficult. But that's a key thing in coaching. Shut up. Right? They say silence. Silence is a key strategy of coaching. Using silence as the answer. So I asked Nisala something. He's telling me. Now he finishes talking. I don't say anything. You'll find after a few seconds, he'll start talking again. Because people don't like silence. They want to fill that silence with something. So we be quiet. Other person will tell more now. He'll try that. He'll try that. Right? So it rains ourselves in. Buy us some more time. So maybe you can ask the and what else maybe three to five times in a conversation. Tava? Tava? Right? So there was somebody who uh, came up with this thing, right? Ask why seven times? Who was that? Peter Senji, right? A famous author. He is the one who came up with this concept of you want to go to the root cause, ask why seven times. It's not like why, 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 why? But it's why, listen to the answer. And why? <laughs> so you go a little deeper. And why is that happening? Mm -hmm. Go a little deeper. And then you finally find the root cause. Yeah? So you ask somebody, why did you come late today? Got up late. Why? Went for a party. Why? Right? Okay. And what else? Is there anything else? So finally, when there is, it seems to be drying up, no more things to say, then finally, is there anything else? No, Sanjay, I think that's it. All right. Yeah. Now we have found what's on the mind. So what were the two questions so far? What's on your mind? And the awe question called the magic question. And what else? <laughs>